Therapist of Plus Pediatrica. My name is Rome Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. So good to have you join us this morning. I hear mm -hmm. that today is Fashion Day. I don't know how much of fashion you know. You look fashionable. You <laughs> 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 uh, whatever you're going to do, but learn to wear what is comfortable for you, learn to wear what gives you confidence, learn mm -hmm. to wear what is uh, agreeable to the society as well. Because yeah. it, it's not only to just wear things because you see it's my body. It and nudity always, is not fashion. Yeah, it's not fashion at all. So fashion day, remember that and do your best to be fashionable. Yeah. Within limits. Yeah, within limits. And I think, you know, you saying com being comfortable is super important mm -hmm. because you don't want to, you know how ladies will wear things that are so uncomfortable. You're wearing a short dress and you're having to like pull it down all, all the, the time, time. Yeah. or, you know, wearing shoes that are hurting your feet. Like just be comfortable. Do you. Um, you don't have to conform to the standards of the world in a, the name of fashion. And nudity is not fashion. To all the ladies out there, all the Gen Zs, I know you want to show how sexy you can be, but you can still be sexy and be covered. You can still be modest mm -hmm. and sexy. So do not think that you have to show off all of your assets for you to say, yes, I am a fashionable person. No, not necessarily. You can still be fashionable, still be modest, still be comfortable in all of that. So, yeah, fashion yeah, you should day, have just be said, yeah, don't tell the good, you know. I'm, I mean, I think I, I think, I think I pretty, could, I think I do well. It could have, could have I'm passed. <laughs> but I, another thing I wonder is that if you have to do fashion, like I, I was talking about being comfortable, mm -hmm. you see a lot of ladies going to church with very big bags, and you think that's offering that <laughs> is in their bag. It's extra shoes. Why not just wear one that you you know you can take through the day? Instead um, of having to carry an extra So, you know, you know, with fashion, right, yeah. there, there, is, there are some parts that it's okay. It's okay to have an, an extra pair of shoes. If, it's not, if, what, if your, your heels are not so comfortable, then when you're, when you're done with the service or the <laughs> event or whatever, oh, yeah. you can, for me, I cannot drive with heels on. Mm -hmm. So, I must have flats in the car or in my bag or whatever. So, it's important that I know, even if I'm going to the event with the heels, <laughs> Do not leave the house <laughs> without yeah. flats. Yeah. yeah. So. You, you want to be comfortable, but I'm not going to wear flats because you have to dress the part as well. If you're going to an event, you want to look nice and the heels kind will give you some form of carriage. You know, you, when you walk into the room looking tall, your shoulders high. No, don't worry, let's not go into fashion <laughs> this morning. Oh, well, <laughs> well, we are the ones who just wake up, wash our faces, wear on our t-shirts. Must t be nice. And that's, uh, it really is nice. Must be nice. It's really nice. I was having a conversation with someone because I started I started a skincare journey last week. That was why I was off for a bit and I had to do the whole face peel and all of that. And I was talking to a friend of mine and I said, guys have it so easy. I think it's because we are used to wearing makeup, having so much chemicals on our face, free radicals, because a man would just wake up, wash his face and he's okay. Yeah, In fact, yeah. most of them don't even moisturize. Do you moisturize? Sometimes do you do I, any skincare? I, I have to I, use a gua sha on my face. I could buy cream and it will last me like two years because oh I my usually forget. And sometimes when I remember, it's just for my hands and then that's the end of it. Wow. But this doesn't mean that there are, not, there are no men that take Don't have to skin the extreme. Concern. Yeah. Uh, not really just concerned, but there are men who wear pink leaves for crying out loud. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's what works for you. Mm. But, but, you know. We're talking about fashion today, and we do hope that um, your fashion sense is good enough, agreeable enough, comfortable enough, mm -hmm. and you know you can stand out, like Rume said, you can stand out without necessarily being immodest. Yeah, mm. true. All right, on today's breakfast show, we're talking, uh, well, federal government activates state emergency centers ahead of flooding. Another discussion we'll be having much later is state of the nation and Nigerians cry for help. We'll also be taking some global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day.
Sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from a magic, and that is by author C. Clarke. Well, um, he was a British fiction writer, and he says this morning, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yeah, technology seems like magic, but mm. look at we now. Technology is magic on paper. Yeah. Technology True. is magic, we can see. Our forefathers had technology, but they were sh it was shrouded in secrecy and mystery. Mm -hmm. So we, we looked at a lot of them as being uh, the Babalawus, the mm -hmm. whatever it is. I think there's, there are a lot of things that African uh, man knows that if they write it on, in books and everywhere, put it in the public space, we are going to know that we are so much advanced. Mm -hmm. advanced even maybe more advanced than the Western country, yeah. Western world. You know, I, I think I'd, I'd shared the story about like the whole IFA thing and the binary codes and numbers. And if you look at technology today, it's basically that it's numbers, it's ones and zeros or ones and I think sevens. Or, there, there's some numbers that they use in IFA, right? And that's what technology is now. I'm sure as of, as of that time, it's just a deity. It's just something that all people worship and believe in. But now they've taken that, I mean, the Western world now has taken that and turned it into something even more. Because right now, having to call your family might seem like magic if it was done in the 1800s or in the yeah in 1500s in old times because you just were like how is that even possible how can i be here and i'm facetiming someone and i'm seeing their gestures i'm seeing how they're smiling i'm seeing everything like how can two people be as of that time they'll be like how can two people how can one person be in two places at the same time like you're here i can see you mm -hmm. but you're physically somewhere else that is like witchcraft mm -hmm. but today it is normal it's technology and I can't even wait to see how technology is going to advance in the next 50 years. Because if we're like this right now, in 50 years, I just wonder what's going to happen. I think there will come a time where <clears throat> maybe we'll have to burn our books and, and start fresh again. I, sometimes I have the feeling that there have been uh, civilization before, before and it is now just coming back. Uh, mm. I feel that we might get to... Because I, I kind of like wonder what it's going to be like you said mm -hmm. 50 years mm -hmm. even now people can just go uh, donate their their eggs and leave mm -hmm. and then they they put a child in an incubator it's not mm -hmm. even a surrogate mother and mm -hmm. all that. They, mm -hmm. there's technology you your like eggs that. yes for years. There, there are technologies like that there there are some people who you can get uh, their eggs frozen and 30 years after they're dead you can still have a child mm -hmm. There's, there's so many things yeah. that are being done now. That the only thing that I feel like the, yeah. in I the feel last like the only thing that years. hasn't been done so far is having to give um, maybe a robot or something. The, the robots like, now being developed with the skin that real yeah. human skin that is developed in laboratories. Mm -hmm. There are robots now that have feelings, and mm -hmm. I think that's a dangerous thing that mm -hmm. we're, we're doing yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. If a ro robot can have feelings, uh, then there's a problem. Hmm. There is a problem. Well, I just hope that whatever we're doing, we're still being careful with technology. I mean, if it's going to develop us, like help us advance in certain areas, I'm down for that. I'm up for it. But when it comes to other things, because was a movie I was watching, I can't remember the, the title of the movie, and I think it was Jennifer Lopez. And this AI, it was like a robot. Mm -hmm. It had feelings. Mm -hmm. He was jealous of the lady's daughter. And next thing, he kills. The, he gets into her head and kills the lady and starts to, you know, cause mayhem in the entire world, killing. Like so, he recruited. He had a soldier full of AIs, and because you can't really talk to them, because their own feeling is their own feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, with a human being, you can still beg. Oh, please don't do this. No, you cannot negotiate with them. Whatever they want to do, because they're machines, they're robots, they're androids. They just have what they want to do in their heads. And they started to kill, you know, they caused mayhem on the entire world. So I hope that, I mean, that's in movies. I hope that it doesn't come we into reality. We may get there. We may get there. Because a lot of things that were, were written in novels, things that were acted in movies, are now real things that yeah. we, we can find. Mm -hmm. There were things that were just imagined then and put into writing or into acting. But now... There are realities that are with us. So yeah. these are some people who are trying to draw our attention to the fact that there may come a time like this, and so we should be careful. But now everybody wants to be the first to, to invent something, something, to create something that has not been done before, and then that 
throwing caution to the wind. So it's a dangerous trend, uh, if you ask me. A lot of technology has improved our lives, yeah. but there's only so much that we can do. It, we may even get to a time where there will be so much technology that we will have nothing to do, so we'll die younger. Mm. Because if you have nothing to do, you might die you're longer. Not, you're not striving for anything. Well. Where, where are you going to? You just <laughs> want to eat te it's technology. AI brings it to oh you. You goodness. don't cook, you don't walk, you, you don't, don't do anything. You don't move your body. You don't you exercise body. anymore. You don't have any need to move your body. And we're actually getting there. So many people are not exercising anymore. People don't well, want to ex exercise. They just want to take drugs. You know, you mm. just see, swallow some drugs and they say that you're going to be uh, slimmer. Mm -hmm. you're Weight going loss to be fairer, pills and... You know, it's well, uh, it's like you said, yeah. let's just have the boundaries, even with technology. It's, it's like magic. It's amazing. But let's know what we're doing. All right. Let's quickly go to our top trending stories. This first one says Vasity's ball again as federal government as to meet workers protest on Tuesday. The academic staff union of universities ASU will meet the federal government on July 25, 2024 to address unmet demands. ASU President Professor Emmanuel Oshodeke emphasized that protests by academics and students have led to this meeting, which aims to ensure the government fulfill promises made. ASU's demand includes the implementation of the 2009 Memorandum of Understanding and addressing various issues such as withheld salaries and university funding. Non-academic staff union uh, under Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, and the non-academic staff union, NASU, plan a one-day protest on Tuesday after four months withheld salaries. This protest will precede a nationwide protest on July 18. The unions express dissatisfaction with the government's failure to resolve their grievances, despite multiple meetings with officials. Sanu and NASU leaders in a joint circular urge branches to hold meetings to discuss the government's insensitivity and prepare for protests. They criticize the lack of commitment from the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Labor and Employment in addressing their issues. The unions plan a nation protest, a national protest in Abuja on July 18, followed by a strike action announcement. The Nigerian government had withheld salaries of both academic and non-academic staff union um, due to their participation in an eight-month strike in 2022. President Bola Tinubu later ordered partial payment for academic staff, excluding non-teaching staff, which led to renewed tensions. Sanu and Nasu have since demanded inclusion in the salary payments, criticizing the selective approach. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I think, like we say in Nigeria, agreement is agreement. The federal government should do whatever they agreed to. Sorry, do. that just reminded me of a song. Yeah. Agreement <laughs> is agreement, you yeah, know. <laughs> we can like that song as well. So, well, but, but this is how it is. No matter how broke the federal government could be, if they were systemic about it and said, okay, you have a you have hundred uh, demands, we will fulfill X, Y, Z this year, next year is X, Y, Z, have a like payment, that. Have a payment plan. Yes, have a payment plan. By now, they would be nearing uh, completion. How would ASU still be talking of an agreement reached or entered into in 2009? Mm -hmm. If you had a child by then, it's 15 years by now. Yeah. So it's not a small thing. How can you keep a, a group that a group that is responsible for building the nation because they are the ones who, ones who churn out the graduates that yes. eventually become whoever they want to become in this uh, country and build the country. And then you're, 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 you enter into an agreement for 15 years and you're not fulfilling them. It's not right. It's just not right. I think yeah. they should just do something about it and be deliberate about And uh, these are people who have families. They have to eat. They have to put food on the table. How are they going to get monies to do all of that if salaries are not being paid. You want them to cut corners. It's like, you know, now employing a policeman because there's no job, mm -hmm. which shouldn't be. It should be something that you feel you have a calling for it. Mm -hmm. But here to make it like it's an empowerment scheme yeah. to employ a policeman. Then you, when you employ him, the first six months maybe you don't pay him and you send him to the road. Mm. There is no way he would, he not, would not want to collect, want to collect bread right and all that. So there. you're teaching him to be a bad person. So. Lecturers will be selling um, handouts Course and all that. Yes, all those all kinds of, of things. I attended a school once uh, when I had my NCA first. It was an affiliate of a university, but run by a, a, a church. Mm. Lecturers were coming from America, from Canada, from everywhere. They will come to school. They will give you handouts. Even if they give you up to seven handouts, they will not bill you a couple. 
now it's not the same. It's not a ma matter of now. The 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 lecturers they, that were uh, the lecturers that were in other schools mm. were billing their students at that time. Oh, so, wow. so imagine so, now. Yeah, it tells you the culture, the culture that has been they have imbibed from where they come from. Mm. They will do everything that they need to do and give you for free. Mm. But it cannot happen in Nigeria because first of all, the lecturer is hungry and the yeah. society expects him to live above board. Mm. So. What do you expect? Tr the truth is, every laborer is due his wages, so make sure that you're paying them. It's as simple as that. However, you know, whatever plan you want to put in place to ensure that they are being paid at the end of the day, just do that. It's embarrassing that every time you're hearing ASU, you're hearing NLC, you're, like, Federal government, can you do what is right? Just do what is right and let's move on. See, labor now. Labor, labor might still go on strike because we've, we've mm -hmm. not heard anything because uh, uh, airports are open. Well... Let's see what happens then. Finally, our top trending story, police arrest female sex trafficker, 59 others in Plateau. The Plateau State Police Commander arrested Peace John, a 20-year-old woman for operating a sex tra trafficking ring from Nigeria to Ghana. She was apprehended in Bukuru Low Cost, just south local government area, after a tip-off. State Commissioner of Police Olugbemi Adishino revealed that John specialized in child trafficking for sexual exploitation. Victims rescued from Ghana identified her as the one who lured them. An investigation is ongoing at the state CID. The police also arrested 59 other suspects for various crimes. Among them was Mohamed Baya from Piantil village, Pakshin local government area, who along with three others robbed and killed Nasara Isa after stealing one million naira. The police recent successes are attributed to incentive patrols raiding of criminal hideouts and visibility policing strategies implemented by Commissioner Adishino, aiming to foster peaceful coexistence in troubled areas of the state. Okay, well, we already have our guest for the um, uh, newspaper review who has mm -hmm. joined us, so we'll be very snappy. Uh, the thing is that I, I like what NAPTIV is doing and I like what uh, the authorities are doing. The unfortunate thing is that we always talk about a woman having the tendencies of a mother, and mm. findings have shown that the, up to 90% of the people who are traffickers in, in Nigeria are women. Mm. And I don't know why that is. And you're supposed is. to have the nurturing spirit. Yes, you're I, supposed I don't to be know a woman. why that is. It, it, really, it really disturbs me. Mm. Why will they be doing something as, as scary, as dangerous, and all that, uh, as mother figures that yeah. they are. It's, it's really disturbing. So who can we run to? We should have been accusing the men of doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Now it's the women. So a criminal is a criminal anyway. Yeah. So let's not just Regardless say of the gender. gender or mm -hmm. anything or ethnicity. So uh, criminals should be treated as criminals. Yeah. And that's the... Uh, I hope she, I hope she faces a justice system. She and, and she all of us. Yes. And she goes away for a long time because there are so many people. I mean, we even have Nigerian movies that are talking about these things. There's so many, syn there's, a, there's a syndicate, a cartel of people who are doing these things, who are trafficking people from here to Syria alone, to Liberia, to other no countries, cabal. to like, Italy. It's a, it's a place of cabal. So we also have trafficking <laughs> cabals <laughs> as it is. Oh my goodness. Tomato sellers have cabals. You know, paper <laughs> sellers know? have cabals. So <laughs> why not in trafficking? Anyways, and I hope that, you know, um, they are all being arrested. They are all being tried and no one just goes scot-free. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us. <laughs>